Yes. This is probably the last time it's going to let me record until I delete. Okay, so now we're going to go live on Facebook. You're doing great because I'm still trying to figure a zoom out. I haven't mastered it at all. Yeah, it was a lot of trial and error. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm putting in the title for a discussion, a discussion on combating this disease. And we're almost there, we're almost there with, almost there. Okay. There. <laughs> And we are now live on Facebook. So, and we're about to go live on Instagram. Oh, oh we can't wow. even put up the caption yet. Okay. Okay. Come on. Come on. I'm just putting the caption in on Instagram so no. people can discussion on combating. One more letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's Instagram. It's Tina Skin. Tina Skin. Skin Diva Seven. Yes, yeah, so it's one word. Uh, Tina Skin S K I N D I V A Seven. The number seven. I don't know why I must be nervous. <laughs> One second. Okay, we are ready to go. And now we are live on Instagram. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. After um, uh, it's it's not late. We're in divine timing. Welcome to this week's Transformation Thursday. And this is Transformation Thursday, week 123. And I am pleased to introduce this evening's speaker, Miss Tina Skin Diva, and her topic is combating disease through natural healing. Hello, Miss Tina, you can just take it away. Okay, hi there. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. So, um, well, I'm a self-published book author my first book came about because I was, I actually had no health issues until a month before my 40th birthday. And that's when everything went crazy. But my first book, The Fight for My Life, is how I battled 38 diseases. And when the Western doctors told me we can't help you, God sent me to the natural doctors and they saved my life. So it's just, it's, it's being, it's going to have a new facelift. We're going to put a new cover and it's just to teach people more about natural methods that you don't have to take a whole bunch of pills or, you know, get cut up on an operating table. You, you have, you, you need to seek out holistic wellness. So my second book is called Love Don't Hit and it is also being edited right now. It's a domestic violence novel. Um, featuring a couple trapped in a toxic, deadly relationship, which so many people are these days. And I'm also working on my third book, which is a poetry book about my life as a survivor of domestic violence. And I'm also working on a couple of other poetry books as well as a Christian book and um, one for children. So I'm just, I'm just really excited, but how my life, how I came to learn about natural medicine was I was 39 years old, 
The most I ever had was a cold or a flu. Um, I worked out most of my life. So, you know, I stayed physically fit. But a month before my 40th birthday, I got violently ill. Um, the right side of my face had completely collapsed. Uh, I was, it was excruciating. The pain was literally excruciating. Overnight, I looked like I had aged 15 years. So I went to the doctor and they kept, they ran MRIs on my brain. They kept saying, we don't see anything wrong. We don't see anything wrong. And I knew something was wrong because first of all, I was in pain. I could hardly eat. I lost, I went down to literally the size of a skeleton. Um, it was very traumatic. And, and, you know, to be in pain and then you see your face disfigured, I thought I had a stroke, but the doctors are saying, we don't see it. We don't see it. So meanwhile, time goes on and on and on. Um, so finally they tell me, well, you have another, uh, doctor in Roosevelt Hospital in Manhattan, he told me you have encephalitis, which is a very uh, fatal brain disease. It's swelling and inflammation of the brain and has a very high fatality rate. So when he told me that, I was like, thank God, now we have a, we have a diagnosis because for almost a year, they didn't even know what was wrong. So he says, well, the thing is, he says, whatever happened already happened to you. So basically there's nothing that we can do. And I was literally devastated. I was like, what do you mean? There's nothing that you can do. So um, at the very end, I'll tell you what I did for the encephalitis. So as soon as the encephalitis was like in full bloom, then I started losing my vision. I started going blind and it was scary because you're in pain and then literally you can't see, like everything was just blurry. So I was, um, I was going to the uh, ear, eye, uh, nose and throat um, clinic in New York. And they were checking my eyes saying, well, we don't know, we don't know. So as you can imagine, I was so afraid. And my son was only 15, my daughter was eight. And uh, from that moment I stopped cooking because I used to cook every night. And I started just letting them get a lot of fast food and whatever, because I was like, I couldn't even function. So then when I started going blind, then I developed neuralgia, which is a very painful nerve disorder of the trigeminal nerve in the face. And I could not eat anything except fruit and salads. And it was a nightmare. I mean, it's like one of the most painful painful disorders you can have, you know? So meanwhile, I'm like, oh my God, what is happening to me? So then I developed diverticulitis, which is a, an abnormal disorder of the colon. So I finally, I finally found a holistic doctor, right? So she told me take fiber, lots of fiber, you need fiber. A lot of people, when they have diverticulitis, they go and they have a surgery, but it's not really necessary if you try a natural method first. So I, I started doing like fiber every day, diverticulitis wow. went away. Then I developed a breast infections. One was infected where they just gave me antibiotics and went away. The other one nearly killed me because I had such a deadly fever that by the time I got to the hospital, I was already literally like shaking from the fever and I was burning up. And so the doctor immediately cut my breast and all this pus and blood came out and immediately I felt better. And I said, what, what is that? And the doctor told me it's debris. And I said, what do you mean debris like garbage? And he said, yeah. And so basically what I figured out on my own was that I had been eating a lifetime of garbage and it was depositing and developing in my body. So then I developed severe, severe swelling around my feet, my ankles. Oh my gosh, it was literally like horrible. 
So what I started doing was I used to use iodized salt. Iodized salt is a deadly poison. It's, it's not real. It's made in a laboratory. If you want real salt, you have to use sea salt, the pink Himalayan salt. And I never knew anything about pink Himalayan salt. So I stopped all the iodized salt and started introducing it. And even my daughter uses it when she's cooking because that's all you need. And you don't need, a lot of people douse their plates with salt. If the food is prepared right with salt, you don't need to put extra salt. That's like high blood pressure just waiting to happen. So I stopped um, all the iodized salt. And the only time it would affect me was, was like, say if I went out to eat, because you know they put the cheap salt in the in the foods, so I would tell everyone immediately stop using uh, iodized salt. The sea salt is the Himalayan pink salt is more expensive, but it's worth it to not have swelling in your in your body. Also, what I would do is I would do body wraps, which is a natural herbal um, wrap that you they wrap whatever part of your body you want. And you literally lose inches. It's water weight mostly, but you lose it within an hour. And the swelling will come out of your body. And then it's up to you to maintain it. You know, you have no sodas, no um, juices with a lot of sugar. You have to drink like nat more natural stuff like lemonade, water, you know, teas, black tea, green tea, stuff like that. People might think, well, that's boring, but it's healthier for you. So um, the next illness, which I'm actually battling now, but I have found a way to, to basically get rid of it. They diagnosed me with COPD, which is a chronic pulmonary obstructive disorder, which means that you just have chronic either um, bronchitis or emphysema or asthma. So for some reason, bronchitis came back to me. So I've been combating it with oil of oregano. I had it so severe, I almost died from it. Just coughing, coughing, coughing. And the doctors wanted to give me that, those chemical uh, inhalers. That, I, I was like, no, I'm not taking that. Oil of oregano, a few, uh, like literally two drops, cough goes away. And this is what I used in the, in the, in the pandemic as well as well as peppermint oil, which is amazing. Like if, like if I get a headache, I don't ever take aspirin or anything like that. I use peppermint oil on my forehead and within minutes, the headache goes away. So how I was able to beat these illnesses, and these are just a couple of the illnesses. I battled 38 diseases. How I ended up beating them was, I went to see, God led me to a natural doctor and he told me that I had developed well, he didn't tell me at first. He used this machine on, on me. It was a, a machine from Germany that, that determines what part of your body is affected. And when he was putting the lever on the different parts of my body, the lever would go like, Broop. but as soon as he put it on my stomach, the lever went like, Broop. and so he said, it's your colon. So by that point, I was just ready to scream. I was like, now it's my colon because I had already been through the 38 diseases. So he told me, yeah, it's your colon. He said, I want you to go do some coffee enemas. Meanwhile, I had never heard of a coffee enema. I'm like, coffee's supposed to be drink, well, drink coffee. So anyway, I, it was an organic health foods uh, store where this doctor worked at. And, um, and so what happened was I bought the organic coffee. And so I went home, started doing the enemas. First day, nothing. Second day, nothing third day, nothing. Well, the third day, actually some, some horrible stuff started coming out, all kinds of worms and parasites and stuff. And I was literally shocked. And I called him and I was like, what, what is this? And he said, well, I didn't want to say anything to alarm you. He said, but anybody who eats meat, any type of meat has parasites. And he says, your problem is they've overrun in your body because your digestive system has shut down. And I was blown away. I was like, oh my gosh. So he says, just keep doing them. Well, I did them for three weeks straight and more and more and more parasites kept coming out. And I said, I have to take this to another level. So I went to see, uh, 
a naturopathic doctor. And oh my gosh, she was so amazing. And she told me, we're going to give you some colonics and you're um, going to drink green drinks. And after this, you have to give up the red meat and the chicken and the fish. And I was like, what? But anyway, she performed seven colonics, seven days in a row. And I didn't eat anything for seven days. And I would go, she would put me in the steam bath. I mean, it was a, like a complete healing. She put uh, essential oils on my back. It literally felt like the skin was burned off of my back. I have never, I was so painful, but it's because I was so toxic you know? And so, um, once we got through the seven days, I was like, I still was like, okay, I don't think I'm well, I'm well yet. She said, just give it time. Within three weeks, the brain disease went away. My eye, my vision came back. I didn't have any more pain with the neuralgia. I mean, literally my body was transformed. And I had made a decision right then, even though now I've backslid a little, I do eat chicken and fish, but I made a, a conscious decision then to give up meat. And for four years, I, I was like literally in the best health of my life. Didn't, I didn't even catch a cold. And it was just like so amazing, but it wasn't just the colonics. It was other stuff like this. God sent this trainer to me. She just came out of the blue and she was like, I want to train you. And I was so angry at being sick. I didn't even want to exercise. And I was like, well, I can't afford it because I'm on medical leave now. She was like, I'll charge you half. So I started training her, training with her twice a week. I would be in agony in my face and we would train. And literally those exercises were so powerful it had gave me such an incredible body that that alone gave me, gave me the power to beat those illnesses because you can't just fight illness sitting down. You have to fight it with exercise, with natural remedies, and you have to get up. You have to be cleansed because all disease begins in the gut. And most people don't even know about that. You know, if you look at a, a, a diagram of a colon, every uh, part of your body is in that colon. And that's why it needs to be cleansed. And that's why a lot of things we eat are just so poisonous. The sugar, the sugary sweets, you know, all that stuff we love, but we don't realize what it's doing to our insides. So basically I had other diseases as well. I had myofascial pain syndrome. I had bone spurs. I had canker sores in my mouth. I used all different remedies that, and they were, everything was natural and got rid of all of those, those illnesses. So what I would like to share with you guys is three beauty tips, health wellness tips that I, that saved my life. And if you're sick, you definitely need to incorporate these. If you're not sick, you need to start incorporating this into your diet and your lifestyle because it will save your life. And one of them is wheatgrass. It's a superfood. That was what the uh, uh, naturopathic doctor gave me. And I still take wheatgrass because I know what it did for me. It's, it, it's been known to cure cancer. It's very potent. And if you're around any health food stores, you can even go get wheatgrass shots. Where I live now, there's no health food stores that has that. So um, I can't get it right now, but soup, but you can go to like Whole Foods and, or you can order it online, wheatgrass. It's amazing. You can put it in your smoothies. You can put it like, say if you have yogurt, oatmeal, and just make sure you have some every single day. It, it's amazing. My second tip is water. You can never, never, never get enough water. So like for me, I don't drink sodas. I don't drink heavy, I don't drink juices. I mean, unless I'm like maybe going out to eat, I might order, not even then. I don't eat, I don't drink juices. But what I do drink is a lot of um, smoothies and a lot of teas and stuff. And those will help you as well. And you can put your wheatgrass in that. 
So also, like I said, a lot of water, 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 water. Be when I gave up the soda, that was another thing I had gave up back then when I was sick. It was hard because I love soda. But I just, what I do with water is I put lemon in it. I'll put um, uh, chlorophyll in it. I'll put like literally anything in it. I'll put raspberry juice. Like I'll juice the raspberries and then put the juice in it just to make the water taste a little bit better and just drink water. That's it. So that's the second tip. And then the third tip is fruits. So really all fruits are good, but like say if you're a diabetic or something, you can't have a lot of the sugary fruits. The, the fruits that have the least amount of sugar are berries, any kind of berries. Um, I love berries. My favorite is blackberries. To me, they taste the sweetest. Watermelon. Watermelon is like water, basically. Cantaloupe, which I never cared for cantaloupe. But once I started eating it, I got used to it. Like whatever it is, like you might say, oh, this tastes weird. But once you get used to it, it tastes actually pretty good. And try to only eat the sugary fruit fruits like once in a while, like the mango and, and uh, you know, all those sugary fruits that we love, the, the grapes and yeah, all of that. So those are my three tips. Wheatgrass, water, give up those sodas, y'all, because those sodas are a killer. And fruits. And so, um, Basically, that's how I, I battled 38 diseases. And like I said, I'm still battling them because they diagnosed me with COPD. I don't take any medication at all for it. Take oil over oregano and that's it. And it works. So um, I guess I'll read two poems that I feel might be conducive to this, uh, what I'm talking about. And um, I have an eating disorder, I, I admit it. Um, I got it from my mom. She was um, morbidly obese when we were young and she had to have her, the bypass operation um, because if she didn't have it, they were told, they told her she would have died. And I remember when I saw her right after the operation, it was so scary for me because she looked so bad. You know, anytime you come out of operation, you're not gonna look good. And so um, I developed her love for eating but an, a, like a, not a natural love of eating, uh, eating disorder, always eating, eating for any pain. So, um, so people like me, we really have it bad because where a normal person might go and eat two slices of pizza, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna eat the whole pie and I can eat it in one sitting and that will kill anybody. So the poem that I wrote that's going to be in my third book um, is called Gluttony. And a lot of people have that problem, especially in America. We are such a food-obsessed society. And um, we, we just eat to, to, like, it's like a compulsion. And it's killing us between the heart rate, uh, heart rates, strokes, cholesterol, it's killing us and we can't stop eating, right? So this poem is called Gluttony. I hope you like it. Um, where does this compulsion come from? It's born out of trauma and dysfunction. It satiates the emptiness, just like a soft caress. All I know is that I can eat a whole food fest. How about eating a whole cake? Inside, I feel myself dying, but it's like, it's okay, as long as I can have that steak. I live for the taste and the temporary void it fills, but in reality, it makes me hate myself. The ugly truth is I really don't like myself, or else why treat my body like a garbage can? Man, oh man, it hurts. I bought into my mama's lie about me. You're unlovable, you're ugly. I hate you to so just kill yourself. Therefore, I hate myself with gluttony. So those, for all of those that have these eating disorders, you have to find a way to beat it. And how I beat it back. And, and what I would like to say before I forget, 
what was the cause of me getting all those diseases was how I ate my whole life. Even though I wasn't heavy, it was still, it was only because I was exercising. It was what I ate. I ate anything I wanted to at any time I wanted to, and it affected me. And that's why I developed those parasites. And most Americans have parasites. They just don't know it. So this poem is called 59, because I just turned 59 years old on January 14th. And I was kind of bummed out because I was like, dang, like 59? Like, where did my, where did life go? It just, it goes fast, y'all, you know? And I was really bummed out, like, because there's so many things that I want to do. And I was like, but I got to remember, we got to remember our time is not God's time. God, God, God can extend your time. So, um, so I says, instead of feeling down about turning 59, I'll write a poem about it. So it's called, it's called 59. No more time. I have to grind. See my dreams come true. What do you desire for you? I want everything I deserve, that and so much more. Satan has robbed me blind and now makes me feel being 59 is a crime. So much was taken from me, but it's my time to rake in. It's not a crime, it's a blessing. And God has promised me so much for suffering through every lesson. Every test and trial almost broke me, but I'm still here, I have the victory. What it did was woke me, not wasting my time. The gift God bestowed on me, running like wow after all i have been through i made it to 59 now is my time to grind and i just want to end it with saying that i went through so much in my life um you know childhood abuse drug and alcohol addiction uh a dead 10-year marriage then i went through the years of domestic violence and then I had to battle over 38 deadly diseases. But in, but what God made me realize is that look at what you went through and you're still here. And it's to inspire and encourage somebody that is going through maybe worse than what I went through to let them know that you can survive, you can make it. You have to put your faith and trust in God and he will bring you through. Because I remember every day when I woke up sick, when I could barely get out of the bed from those diseases, I would play this gospel song. And every day I said, I know that my savior lives and he's gonna heal me in some form. I didn't know how, but I just believed it and I held on to it. And it was for a reason to let people know that holistic medicine works. And if you have diseases, you have to take your, you have to be the operator of your own health. You have to do your research. You have to look into a naturopathic doctor. You have to, when they tell you, you have something, you have to do the research and see, well, what do I have? What can I do? They had, they, now they diagnosed me with gout, which I got it because of the high blood pressure pills, because I had put on weight. So the high blood pressure came. I figured out how to get rid of the gout. You just do cherry juice and you don't eat those foods that have purines. And basically what happened was if you do that, you, you will be gout because I had beat gout for over a year, didn't have no more gout. And then it came like, cause I had ate some sardines cause those are high in purines. So whatever disease you're battling, you can win it. You just have to have the right tools. Amen. Thank you. I have to say there's so many um, questions and comments. Um, I don't know if I should do, let me do Facebook first before Instagram. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so, so someone asks, what do you recommend for arthritis and joint pain? Okay. So for arthritis and joint pain, fish oils, a lot of fish, because fish, fish oils have been known to help. They, they keep the lubric, they keep your joints lubricated and they, they keep them soft. 
arthritis is a crippling disease you're, because it's like the body is unflexible. I would also suggest going to the sauna because the heat will help the bot will help it because that's what helped me. I mean, I don't have arthritis, but I know other people that do have it. And I know my body was like kind of feeling stiff. I go to the sauna. It helps you. And you have to exercise. You have to see what happens is when we don't exercise, that's how these diseases are able to just come into our body. But if you exercise, your body can fight that arthritis. But you have to be dedicated to it. You can't like start one day and go strong for a week and then stop. You have to like join a gym or however you want to do it. You want to work out in your house and you have to like stay off of the meats because the meats are a killer. They really are. So this day I don't eat red meat. I don't eat pork, ham, none of that. You got to eat, you know, if you want to eat meat, you got to eat like fish, you know, turkey, something that's light. So that's how you can beat arthritis. Okay, thank you for that. Um, what do you recommend for hormonal imbalance? That's a good one. <laughs> Basically, what well, with hormones, it's it's an imbalance in your body. So I would say you should really look for a naturopathic doctor who can really run some tests and see what's causing it. It could be different things. So, you know, it could be different things that's causing it. So it's hard to say like what you can do, but there's a lot of natural remedies for hormones. So you can actually research it, you know, like for example, when I went into menopause, you know, I had heard such horror stories about when you go into menopause, you're going to have hot switch and you're going to this and you're going to this. But because I exercised most, most of my life, then I went through that period where I turned vegan. When menopause came, I had no symptoms at all, like no hot flashes, no nothing. So basically it's, but what that is, is about hormones. So you have to look into what is causing your hormones to be out of whack and then look for a natural uh, product just for that. And you might need to have a naturopathic doctor help you with that. Okay, thank you. Um, so someone mentioned that um, they're currently pregnant and what is good when you're taking good, sup what is good when taking good supplements? You said they're pregnant? Yes, I'm currently pregnant. What is good when taking good supplements okay well you know when you're pregnant they say you really shouldn't take much things because you don't want to affect the baby you take your prenatals and you take superfoods so there's so many amazing superfoods like you can make you can have like say you make a salad and you can have quinoa with it instead of white rice then say you have you make some chicken you can make couscous with it instead of white rice or spaghetti because those are toxic foods. So it's all about nutrition. Add lots of fruits and vegetables, uh, oatmeal. You can make a, a smoothie bowl. A smoothie bowl is amazing. You put like, um, you can put yogurt in it and you put fruits and you put granola and you put uh, moringa powder, which is moringa is another superfood. And I'm, and I'm telling you, it will give you energy. You will feel great. And your baby is getting nutrients. So you don't really won't need to take any supplements. When you're eating healthy, you don't need supplements. Oh, unless you have, you're battling a certain disorder. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so just switching to Instagram now. Um, um, but I want to say, I'm so glad that you mentioned like um, wheatgrass and, and what part of the Bronx do you reside in? Well, I lived in, the, my, I lived in the Bronx my whole adult life and I moved to Virginia seven years ago. Okay. So now I'm, in, now I'm in Virginia. Okay, but you still have that Bronx connection okay oh, yeah. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> but yes um wheatgrass it's it, you know that's a great a great reminder um i i love liquid chlorophyll i mean I wheatgrass is wheatgrass um 
you know, like, like, oh, no. kind of building building a tolerance for it. Yes, I love that, Fran. But the um, yeah. the liquid chlorophyll, just throw that in some apple juice. You know, um, just yes. yeah, th yeah, throw that in some juice and just and just chug it. And yeah. I love that it's um uh, that it's you know got all the chlorophyll and all the green. Um, so here on. Uh, so on Instagram, I, I, I know there were some questions, some comments here. And thank you. What you said about um, um, parasites. Woo. Oh, Woo. my gosh. <laughs> Those little buggers almost took me out of here. Wow. Yeah. They are so, horrible. So um, after the parasite cleanse, what like how did you feel after that like once they began to leave your body like how did you begin to feel oh my gosh it was i went from having no energy could, could barely walk to i started having so much energy and i started looking so good because like i said i really was embracing the holistic way of eating people used to stop me on the street and they used to ask me are you a trainer do you, you work out? You look amazing. I mean, my, I felt like, God, if I could just have bottled that, that and kept it, you know, but you know, we fall back sometimes, but it was, I felt the best I've ever felt in my life. And I looked the best. It was amazing. And like you were saying about the chlorophyll, I have some right here. I also put it in my water and juice. It chlorophyll is amazing because it's the blood of the plant and it's so potent. So this is the stuff we should be drinking and giving our kids. Not all them poisonous juices that they drink. It's just sugar and coloring. That's all it is. Yes, and I freely admit that um, my son gets a scoop of, well, he gets a, a, like a cap full of um, liquid chlorophyll every day. <laughs> like I think he's used to green. seeing his juice being green. <laughs> Yes. Um, so some so comment on on Instagram. Vegans can also get parasites. We all have them, which is why it's important to detox and not consume an abundance of sugar or processed foods. And thank you so much for sharing your story. You're amazing with all the healing that you're doing. It takes love and courage. Um, yes. Um, and, and she's right, vegans can get it too because the fruits and vegetables are so sprayed with all kinds of chemicals and so much pesticides and so much stuff. And if we don't clean it properly, we can, we can get a parasite. I'll just say quickly what I experienced. And again, it was a natural remedy that helped me. I was working at this place called the Holistic Pharmacy in Hampton, Virginia. I love that job. I really learned a lot about natural stuff as well. So this one day, a man was selling canepas. I don't know if you know what those are. It's like that little fruit in the green hard shell. Mm -hmm. You have to bite the shell to get the fruit. Yes. So he was selling them in the street. So I bought some and not thinking, you know, to wash them off. I just bit the shell and started eating them. And I was outside my job waiting for my boss to come. And next thing I know, I started feeling my throat closing up. Mm. And I was like panicking. Like I, I had, it was a parasite. It was something on that shell. And so I was just like, oh my gosh, I just kept drinking water, kept drinking water, kept drinking water. So as soon as my boss came, I told him, I was like, my throat is closing up. I ate this fruit and it something went into me. He gave me this stuff called um, allergy allergies. He created his own products and literally he, he I, I had a cup of coffee. He put some in the coffee, like literally within like 15 minutes, my throat opened back up and I was perfectly fine. Wow. It uh, is. Okay, I'll ask you later if there's a, a website for this product. That sounds amazing. Yes, definitely. There is. It's the Holistic Pharmacy, www.com Holistic Pharmacy, but with a F, not a P. Okay. F -A yeah, it's F-A-R-M-A-C-Y.com. And yeah, they have the products online. It's some amazing stuff. So is it the Holistic 
pharmacy? I believe just... mm, I believe it's the holistic pharmacy, yes. I believe so. Yeah, I loved working there. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um but there was another comment here as well. Okay, um, what we talked about rice. So wild rice or black rice is healthy and paired with beans is a complete protein. Yes, it is. It's perfect. I had never had black rice, so I moved to Virginia. And then somebody had said to me, they were like, have you ever had black rice? You know, it's something only the emperors in China used to eat. And they didn't want to give it to like regular people. And he said, it's the most potent, healthiest rice in the world. And when he told me that, I was like, I have to have this rice. And I found it out here and it's delicious. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, we don't um, need white rice because all those things, white rice, pasta, all, while they taste delicious, they've been bleached. So they've been stripped of all nutrients. So you're eating them, you're not getting any nutrients. That's why you still feel hungry. Like when I eat white rice, I'll want like three and four helpings. Mm. Whereas if I eat mm. brown rice or black rice or wild rice, I like one helping and I'm good. Because your body is still starving for the nutrients. Mm. So that's why you need to have multiple help multiple health things because your body is looking for the new for the um nutrients it's looking for the nutrients and that's why we keep eating and eating and eating and we're not getting those nutrients in fact i read this article once it, it really flipped me out because it was about a morbidly obese person and um the, they were like over 600 pounds and they were saying that the more they said if you compare the morbidly obese person to a skinny person that's fit, the morbidly obese person is the starving to death because they're not getting any nutrients and that's why they can't stop eating. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Um, could you speak more about the, the wheatgrass, um, the benefits of wheatgrass, how you can get it? Definitely. Well, the benefits are they've been they've they've done studies. They it's been known to cure cancer. There's this um, clinic in Puerto Rico. It's called the Ann Wigmore Center. And when the doctor, when the Western doctors give the like, say if someone is in stage four cancer, and the, so the Western doctors like we can't help you. They go to some of these people have gone to the Ann Wigmore Center and they put them on wheatgrass fast and they put them in the sun because we need the sunlight and they do other things and the people have the cancer goes into remission. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful wheatgrass is and it's great for your skin. It gives you energy. I mean, it deodorizes your colon. It's just it's numerous numerous things it, it helps your hair grow your nails i mean it's it's an amazing superfood okay i i hadn't heard that name in a while actually <laughs> the, um, but yeah i remember hearing about the Anne rigmore um, clinic in puerto rico um, yeah. and so the wheatgrass you juice it or you just eat the just consume it in, like like in a salad how I take the wheatgrass, I'll either put it in my smoothie or I'll put it in water and I'll drink it like that. Yeah, or I'll put it like maybe over fruit, but mostly I have it in, in my smoothie. And so you can buy it from, from the health food store in liquid form? Powder, I get powder, but you can get it in, um, you can get it liquid powder or the capsules. I like getting the powder where I scoop it out and then I just mix it in my, my smoothie or I'll pour it in my water and just drink it like that. And then if you wanna give it a little more flavor, you put some lemon. So then you have the wheatgrass in your water with some lemon and it, it's really, I mean, it, maybe it might take an adjustment for some people, but I love it now. It, you get used to it and, you, and it makes you feel good. You know, those sodas and everything is, is so draining. It's so, like my grandson came over the other day and he was like, oh, mama, I want some soda. And I was like, Jeremiah, you know, we don't have soda here. And he goes, well, can I get just a little bit of Josh's? And I said, I'm gonna make you a nice drink. And I made him like a nice 
drink and he, a smoothie and he was happy. Cause I was like, you don't want that sugar in your body. It's just acid chemicals and um, what it is, it's acid coloring and sugar. That's it. Um, so it's not feeding, it doesn't feed our body anything. It just, it strips us. And the, the wheatgrass is available in pill form. Yes, you can get it at Whole Foods or you can order it online. They even have, I believe they have it at Trader Joe's now. Yeah, so you can get the wheatgrass in any of those three places. Whole Foods, tra uh, Trader Joe's, or you can order it online. Or if you have like a, a natural health food little supermarket near your house or in your neighborhood, you can they, they might have it as well. Oh, and they also have it at the vitamin shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, they have it in the vitamin shop. Yeah, oh. I can't live without it. Like I said, I either have to have my wheatgrass, my chlorophyll, or my moringa, one of those, I can't be without it. And there was a period where I stopped it for a long time and oh my God, I was just so sick. Always, it was always something, always something. And what are the, the benefits of the moringa? Oh my gosh, well, the moringa is, is mostly energy. It's It comes from the moringa seed, which is a, a very potent, uh, tree in Africa. It, in fact, they say it's one of the most potent trees in the world. And um, the moringa seed is great for energy. It's great for sexual impotency. Um, it's great for, for like your vision. I mean, so many things. It is just powerful. And like you take a teaspoon or two a day and you're good. You have your nutrients. So that's why I said it's not necessary to take a supplement unless you're going to take like your a multivitamin or something that's fine but if you have the the superfoods the the grasses you're good that's why the strongest animals in the world what do they do they eat grass all day elephants um uh what's the other ones all of those huge humongous um animals are vegetarians all they do is eat grass and they are strong you know, they are, they're just, they're, they're strong animals, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's, it's flip, it's out of my mind which ones they are, but it's a whole host of them that are vegetarians and they're, they're amazing animals, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's something too, how they're bigger, they're bigger than the meat eaters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause when you eat meat all the time, after a while, it just, it depletes you. Because it's when you really look at it, I mean, it tastes good, but basically we're eating a carcass. That's how brainwashed we've been to believe that eating flesh, an animal flesh is good. Um, um, you mentioned earlier about the coffee, um, the, was it coffee enemas or the coffee colonics? And it was, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, 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 that I was <laughs> wondering if it was the, the coffee colonics or the um, enemas and how long you did them and how frequently before you started seeing the, the parasites. Okay, so it was two different things. The, the coffee enemas was the first one I did and I did that for three weeks. And like I said, when I was doing it for the three weeks, every single day, masses and masses of parasites was coming out of me. I was literally shocked. Like I didn't even think anything like that existed. And, um, you know, it was just, it was endless. So that I did the coffee enemas for three weeks. And then that's when I realized I'm not going to get anywhere this way. Let me go see a professional and let them professionally clean me out. So when I went to the colonic hygienist, she just did the straight colonics. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour and they just clean you out. And the whole time you're laying there, stuff is going to come out. And afterwards you feel lighter. You feel your mind is more clearer. You just feel, in fact, I'm planning to have some, some done. Um, Cause it's a great way to start off. They say you should cleanse every four times a year in the beginning of spring, summer, winter, fall. 
And so once you do those colonics, and because let me tell you, when the colonic hygienist was taking care of me, something had came out of me. She was putting it, she had it going somewhere where she could like examine it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this, she showed me this giant thing. It looked like, actually, it looked like kind of like a rock. It looked like a Mm -hmm. stone. And she said, this has been in your system for over 20 years. Wow. And I was completely blown away. I was like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, you, she said, you never need to eat meat again. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. So, and the colonics I did for seven days and I, I didn't eat for seven days. I just drank wheatgrass and I took fiber and I drank water and teas. And at the end, I mean, it took three weeks before the, the, the healing took effect. But on that third week, I was like, oh, MG. Like, I was just, I was completely healed. The neuralgia went away, the nerve disorder, the face. It was like everything just stopped because all that crap was taken out of me. You know, when we think about all the stuff we eat, whether it's red meat, sugar, processed foods, half medications, half of that stuff never comes out. It stays in our body. Mm -hmm. You know, our colon is 30 feet. So that stuff is packed in there. And especially if someone's overweight with a big stomach, you can just imagine how much stuff is in their body. So there's no way they can be healthy. There's no way. Yes, um, years ago, I did um, the training at the Woods Institute in um, in Florida to, to do the colon therapy. And yeah, um, and sometimes after a colonic, like, yeah, I'm never going to eat again. <laughs> you know, I just, yeah, I, I don't want to digest any, anything again. Um, so someone had to comment, um, I guess, asking about the, the wheatgrass, um, is, it, is it natural? And um, yeah, I can say that it it is. It just for for me, it just took uh time to build up a tolerance to the to the taste of the wheatgrass. And that's why the I found the liquid chlorophyll to be more palatable, you know, mm-hmm. just just like scooping stuff and um, you know, just pouring a cap full in juice and and just mm-hmm. going. You just have to be careful. It's you know, that it doesn't stain, you know, yes. that's that's the only thing. <laughs> yes. Um so, it's true. You take which one is more, you know, that you can hop tolerate better, whether it's the chlorophyll, the, the wheatgrass, you know, whichever one is that works better. But it's amazing. And, it, it really is what it does for the body. And can you show a picture? And someone is asking about the chlorophyll. Can you show a, a picture of, of yours? Yeah, I have it right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so the one I what it looks like. Mm-hmm. You can get it at the vitamin shop. It's completely green. Mm-hmm. It's the blood of the plant. So it's very concentrated. So you're getting a pure, pure vitamin here. And like um, our host said, you just take a, a scoop of it. You put it in your, your, your tea or water and you just drink it. You know, I have it right here. I put some in a, I'm going to show you. I have it in my water. And so I'm just drinking this throughout the day. And um, yeah, because I tell you, after 50, child life is going to really change. So you have to do something to help yourself feel better. Mm-hmm. And those grasses are it to me. And and how often do you drink it? Do you drink yours three times a day? I usually have mine in the morning because sometimes it can start working. <laughs> so I usually just take mine in the morning. but. How often do you um, how, do you drink yours three times a day? That's the question. What I do is I'll pour some in a bottle. So this is uh, 32 ounces. And I'll just, also I'll, I'll pour some in this and I'll just drink this throughout the day and that will be it. That's how I usually do it. Okay. So yeah, because it's like, I'm, st- I'm getting it all throughout the day. And it helps because I'm telling you the things that I battled with the gout, man, if I wasn't drinking these things, I don't think I could have survived it. Yeah. And yes, you, you earlier, you mentioned cherries, you were taking cherries for the gout. So you were juicing the cherries. 
No, what I was doing, um, cherry tart cherry juice is one of the best things for gout. So you can buy the organic, uh, exactly. Actually, this is it. Um, the organic tart cherry blend juice. So this is the healthy one. And um, it's gluten-free, it's 100% vegan. Uh, it, it's just very good, no GMOs. So I was drinking the tart cherry juice, plus I would buy the actual cherries and just eat them throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And the, it, got, it actually did get rid of the gout for a year. And I only just had an attack of it because I had ate sardines, not realizing sardines are high in purines. And that causes the, the, uh, the, what is that stuff? The night, the acid to build up in your toe. And that's what causes it. So that's why they say people with gout, you should not have no seafood, no alcohol, and no red meat. Those are the three main causes of it. So what do you say the cherries have? Pure, pure green? No, the gout, what, what happens is, okay, so say if you're a big seafood eater, for me, I don't eat shrimps, I don't eat crabs, I, I, get, I had to give all that stuff up, and so um, <laughs> it was crazy, so what happens, but if you're like a big seafood, like I eat fish though, but if you're a big seafood eater, like you eat crabs a lot, shrimps, that can cause gout, because it's high in purines, the, the seafood. So the, the, so what happens is some people's body can't metabolize the purines and that's when it causes the uric acid to build up in the body and that's what causes the gout, which is very, very, very painful. Um, so painful. And so um, what happened is, is that when you drink the cherry juice or you eat the cherries, it like neutralizes it and it, it li like literally knocks it out. Um, so the cherries can stay contain. Okay, so I guess mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the, they contain, but the cherries just they fight the uric acid in the body, and that's mm -hmm. what we need. We need the uric acid. We we need it to be toned down to get out. It's too much, and the liver or the kidneys is not metabolizing it like it should, and so it builds up, and then that's what causes the gout. But if you drink cherry juice, it will get rid of it. And you just have to stay away from seafood, alcohol, and red meat. See, for me, I don't eat those things. What gave me the gout was the high blood pressure pills, which have been known to cause gout. But, you know, they, doctors don't tell you that. You kind of have to do your own research. And like they say, with the, that's why I don't believe in pharmaceutical pills, because they help one thing, but then they give you another problem. And a lot of people have had those problems. They'll, they'll take medication for one thing and then they'll find, well, now this is all messed up. And that's what happened to me with the scalp. And so, whew, and they say it's the rich man's disease. I'm like, okay, well, where's my money at? <laughs> it's crazy. I'm like, mm-mm. <laughs> Because it's supposed to be like the rich man's diet, all those rich foods, which are really no good for us. They mm -hmm. taste good. You know, I would say once in a while, yeah, you have to treat yourself. You can't be like, but to eat those things on a regular is just a killer. Okay. I have a question. What do you recommend for dandruff or itchy or scabbing scalp? Oh, I have the perfect remedy. <laughs> All they have to do is, um, well, I make my own shampoo, which is amazing. What you can do is what, when you get your shampoo, put tea tree oil in it. Mm. So that's one thing. And then get some olive oil and put pour some essential oil of the tea tree essential oil. Like, okay, so like, this is the tea, this is peppermint essential oil tree right now, but you put some in olive oil and then you massage your scalp with it. You just massage, massage, and then you wash your, you shampoo your hair with the shampoo with tea tree drops in it. You won't have any more dandruff. It's amazing stuff. Tea tree is, it's good for acne as well. 
you know, and like another, another thing I had developed when I, I had never had problem skin, like, except one time when my son was born, it was hormonal and I broke out and then it went away and never had no problem. My late forties broke out with acne, eczema, rashes, and hyperpigmentation. My skin looked a fright and I was trying all these products, these chemical products, chemicals don't work. And it was getting worse. And I was literally traumatized because I was trying to be a diva. You can't be a diva with acne. I'm sorry. You just can't do it. <laughs> and so what happened was I cried out to God one night and he inspired me to create my skin line. That's what it was born from, my trauma. And in three months, I was cleared. And now I've helped like thousands of people with clearing their skin up. So that was one of my other diseases I battled was that it was, it was horrible. I would scratch till I bled. It was just a nightmare. Yeah. And I believe it came from my, from eating the bad food, you know, see, not everybody's going to get an effect from eating the bad food. See, some people get the signs like I did and it's like, okay, I better give this up. Some people don't get the signs and then it just turns into a deadly disease like cancer, heart disease, and then it's too late. So you, you want the signs so you can stop doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, someone stated um, their child has a dark ring or like hyperpigmentation around the neck and it's gotten darker. Are there any recommendations for that? Well, I can tell her some natural oils to get that can, that might help, but it's, it, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but usually when you get the darkness around the neck, that might be like a sign of diabetes. And a lot of kids are getting diabetes now and it's all food related. Like we just have to give our kids more natural food, foods, like fruits, vegetables, you know, kale chips are really good. I give those to my grandkids. Um, because that's what can co be causing the darkness. But what you can use is you can get coconut oil, you can get um, grapeseed oil. All those natural oils are amazing for the skin. They're just amazing. Or if you're interested, you can reach out to me. I make vitamin A is one of the best things for the skin. So I make my own vitamin A oil and I sell it. And it's amazing because we need vitamin A. And usually that's what's lacking in the diet. So that's why your child might be having the hyperpigmentation. So a vitamin A, you gotta have like, uh, what is it? Like the, the red, red and green bell peppers, you know, um, yams, stuff that has, that has very high vitamin A content. So yeah, just try to give your child more healthier foods to eat and try to look into the, those oils are amazing. They really are. So <laughs> foods high, I really heard of vitamin A. So what foods are good, are high in vitamin A? You said yams? Yeah, so off the top of my head, I can send you a list after if you want to post it. Um, but I know yams are high in vitamin A. So like say if you have a salad, some people might just have lettuce and tomatoes. To me, that's like a boring salad. So I like putting red or green or yellow red bell peppers. That's very high in um, vitamin A. Um, I believe strawberries are. So you eat those things, you get that vitamin A, it'll keep your skin clear. You know, it is, yeah. We have to have more of those foods in our diet and less of that, those processed craps they're selling. I mean, they're killing our kids with all that crap. You know, it's just, they, they can't think after a while, they become constipated and everything, the skin is the largest organ. So everything is gonna come through your skin. You can tell a lot about a person just from looking at their face. Like, I'll give you an example. So like, if someone has very, very, see, I have bags, but that's from, cause I'm an insomniac. But when you see someone like with really, really big, heavy, like suitcases, that means their kidneys are being overworked. Mm. So they need to eat, they need to stop eating foods that's making their kidneys overwork. So if you see like a lot of lines here, that's like the liver 
are in the corners of the eyes, the liver's overtaxed. So then if you have like hormonal breakouts in the chin, I mean, if you have like breakouts around the chin, that's usually like hormonal. So you have to really think about, okay, changing the diet is key because it's not always what we put on ourselves; It's what we put in our bodies because whatever we put in our bodies is going to come through. You know, that old saying, you are what you eat. It's actually really true, but it's not only we are what we eat, but we will look like what we ate. It will show through. Because the, the stuff has to come through somewhere. So it's going to come through the skin, either in eczema, hyperpigmentation, something. Rashes, you know, rashes are, wow. Whenever I eat red, white bread, which I have to admit, I love white bread, but it doesn't love me. Whenever I eat it, I develop an insidious rash on my stomach. Mm. It's crazy. Every time. Mm. Yeah, I can't eat it. <laughs> so I'm like, just imagine if it's doing that to me, what is it doing to your body? Like, yeah. Wow. Um, um, still looking at the Facebook comments. Um, do you have a suggestion for dementia? Well, you know what? This is what I will say. I read a lot of books from um, naturopathic doctors and one doctor wrote a book and he said that he treats, he treats a lot of dementia patients. And he says what he does, he says when a person has dementia, he said it's a sign that they're dehydrated and they didn't just become dehydrated, they've been dehydrated they just, they don't have enough water in their body. And so the brain starts to become dehydrated. The brain starts to like literally shrink. And so what happens is he puts his patients on high, high volumes of water. And that's hard when you're not used to drinking water, but he says that he has a very high success rate. I can't remember his name because I read the book a while ago, but, he, but if you have suffering with dementia, drink water. It's H2O. It natural. Hydrogen and oxygen, you can't get no better than that. The brain needs oxygen. The brain is, because we're getting older, so the brain is like, I'm thirsty, but we're just drinking sodas and this and those horrible Red Bulls and those horrible energy drinks. Toxic. You have to drink water. And then you're meant, the person's memory will start to come back. So I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do, because I realize I fell off with the drinking water. I'm trying to do like, uh, well, I'm starting with this. Now I'm trying, I am doing it. 32 ounces a day. And then once I can master that, then build it up. But I used to drink over a gallon of water a day. Yeah. And I, I felt great. So yeah, dementia, you have to drink water. And then you can also look up, they have a lot of natural remedies, a lot of herbs that are good for that as well. But I can't think of any off the top of my head. <laughs> you know, but, that, yeah. that, 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 that's so simple. And, you know, in a way it, it makes sense because isn't it said that during that, um, you know, the brain is kind of shrinking? The brain is shrinking. When, 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 when you're dehydrated? Yeah, when you're dehydrated, the brain shrinks and it can't function anymore. So it just kind of, you start losing your memory. You start feeling angry. You know, a whole host of, of issues start happening because you have to think about it like this. If you think about back in the day, when back, I'm gonna go back, like back in the day with the slaves and stuff, they didn't have no dementia. They worked out there in those fields until they died because they didn't have all the processed foods that we have. Those processed foods is, that's what satisfies us. It's like, give me some chips, popcorn, cake, cookies. So we're constantly eating, we're not drinking water. So imagine if you're not really drinking water for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So then how, then your brain is just gonna keep shrinking and it's gonna, it's dehydrated. You know, I saw a show one day, um, it was a man hosting a, some sports 
and literally we saw him on the camera. I don't know if you saw this. He he started his eyes rolled up and he passed out on the camera. Mm -hmm. And they said he was dehydrated. Mm -hmm. That's all. He was just he was dehydrated. We we don't drink enough water. Even with, with the with the bottled water craze, we still don't drink enough water. And so then to try to so then now okay, so our brain has been not drinking water for 30, 40 years. I mean, we'll drink every now and then, but you know what I'm saying. So then all of a sudden it's like, I can't remember anything. I'm, yeah. And then we try to force and drink it. it yeah, it's, we have to start drinking it now and just stay drinking it until we, until we get up or in age. Got to just keep drinking it from young, from 20s up until. And we don't do that because every year something new is coming out to drink. Mm. So Every day, all I see is people like with, whenever I go out, they have sodas, uh, some new drink. Um, I remember um, I was dating someone and he was like, do you want to go get a Slurpee? And I was like, what's that? And he said, oh, it's um, it's like in the machine. And you, we went there. I looked at that. I said, that's just pure sugar. I said, I can't drink that. But people were there getting the Slurpees. Nobody's drinking water. And so that's, so that's why the brain is dehydrated. Just like that man, he passed out on the set. The kidneys get dehydrated. Everything is dehydrated. But you don't know it because you're not going to like feel it. But it, it's subtle. Then by the time it hits us, it's like we're already like messed up. So, yeah. Wow. Um, someone is saying on Instagram, watermelon. Watermelon, because that, that's high in... in in water also in fact i have a little testimony about watermelon when i was battling all my illnesses one of the illnesses was high blood pressure so they gave me a water pill plus another pill my body cannot take pharmaceutical drugs so basically while the, the high blood pressure pill did control it i wasn't i gained weight so I said to the doctor, I says, why am I gaining weight if I'm on a water pill? That's supposed to pull the water out of my body. And he was like, well, I don't know. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to find a natural diuretic. And so I researched it. And that's how I found out about watermelon. It's a natural diuretic. So I started eating watermelon every day. Do you know it pulled all the water out of my body? It did. It worked better than the water pill that the doctor tried to give me. Watermelon. If you drink it, I mean, drink it. If you eat it all the time, you you won't be filled with edema and all those all that stuff. And remember, back in the day, we that's all we used to see was watermelon. Now kids don't even want watermelon. They don't like it. Because mm -hmm. I had bought some. I was like, I said to my grandsons, "You want watermelon?" He's like, "I don't like watermelon." I'm like, what? Like never heard of that before. We don't, we don't, yeah, but it's a it's an amazing diuretic to take to help you lose weight too. Because it will pull that water out. But you have to be consistent with it. You can't mm -hmm. eat it like once in a while and yeah, it's not gonna work then. On on Facebook, some saying cucumber is good because cucumber has um lots of water also. Cucumber is excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. It's one of the best diuretics out there. And not only is it a great to take internally, but it's also good for your eyes. Like say if you just have bags all the time or get slice some cucumbers and lay down and just put it on your eyes. It pulls out the poisons from your eyes too. And it's very soothing. Okay, okay. Um, so I have a question here. Um, what to do when someone suffers with chronic migraines oh my gosh that was one of my illnesses oh my gosh like I said I had 38 I had some I'll never forget it I was doing my thing in New York I went to this um nightclub it's called the Taj Mahal it's on 23rd Street a be beautiful nightclub so I'm you know networking and stuff telling people about my skin products and next thing I know it was the first time I developed a migraine and literally, it felt like someone was stabbing my eye and my eye just started running and running. And I was like, what is this now? 
how I got rid of the migraines was when I did the colonics, I never had another migraine. Till this day, I've never had another migraine. Mm. I mean, there's yeah. stuff they say you can take. I don't know what it is, but all I know is that colonics knocked out most of my diseases. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. But it migraines is one of the most painful headaches in the world. It's um, I believe they said it's from stress. So you have to alleviate your stress, whatever is causing you stress, you have to get do away with it and just be calm, you know, just be calm. Maybe try yoga. You know, yoga is an amazing calming exercise for the body. But I would say do a great detox, you know, get some colonics done. If you're suffering with migraines, because it's from toxins, that's basically what, that's the root of it is toxins. You know, it's another thing people say, I have allergies, I have allergies. Personally, I don't believe in allergies. What I believe allergies are is toxins. If you have toxins in your body and you're not, if they're not coming out, then it's going to give you a reaction to something. So they say, well, it's allergic. No, you're just how you're just filled with toxins. You get rid of the toxins, you won't have the allergy anymore. And I've seen it happen over and over again. Even with someone I was dating, he had severe um allergies and he'd always be like sneezing like phlegm, like just it was a mess. So I made this tea. I, I someone told me about it. It was like a natural tea that you mix like stuff like ginger and cayenne pepper. And every time he drank that thing, he wouldn't have those allergies or those toxins. But as soon as he started eating the bad food, it would come right back. So it is everything is what we put in our bodies, you know, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, that's why I don't do dairy either. I don't drink any milk. I do like cheese, but I try to get vegan cheese most of the time, mm -hmm. but I gave up the milk because I found out I drink like almond milk, soy milk, coconut milk, rice milk. I found out dairy is one of the worst things that we can consume. Drinking mm -hmm. a, a cow's milk that's meant for her babies, it's not mm -hmm. meant for human consumption, but they have a so giving us this stuff is they, they linked, um, cow's milk to ear infections in children, to causing mucus and to co giving colds. M dairy is the worst and that's all they give kids is milk, milk, milk. It's the worst thing you can drink. If you want your kids to be healthy, take them off that milk and give them almond milk. Mm -hmm. it's, it tastes even better to me. Um, someone on IG said, I avoid dairy too, but I do hyper around their menses. Um, I've, I've heard of kyfer before. I think that's like a, a milk substitute or is that made with yogurt? It is. It's like, a um, yeah, it, it's supposed to be more healthier. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it's made with, but I have tasted it. it to me, I liked it. Anything is better than that dairy. That thing is a killer. <laughs> And how I know it's a killer is because I don't drink, I don't eat, drink the dairy, but when my grandkids would come over, I would always get them ice cream, which now I've decided I'm going to start making them something more healthier. That's like ice cream, like maybe soy ice cream. So I would get the ice cream for them. So, you know, who doesn't like ice cream? So I'd be like, well, I'm going to have some ice cream too. The mm. next day I would be spitting up phlegm, like just gobs of it. And I'm like, what is this? So I had to stop. I'm like, I'm not buying y'all the ice cream. I'm not eating it either. <laughs> but you can make, like, you can Google recipes and make your own ice cream and it can be just as good and it will just be healthy. I think um, um, it was either Whole Foods or Trader Joe's that had this vegan, like, what was it? This vegan vanilla ice cream that was so good. <laughs> it was so good with, without... 
you know, without the uh, effects of, of dairy. So, so good. Um, mm -hmm. So, oh yes, the kefir is cow's milk, but you can get fermented cashew kefir, but it's not the same. That's what I think I had, the fermented cashew. Yeah. I mean, they say it's better than the whole cow's milk, but if it still has milk, I wouldn't want to drink it. You know, the milk, the cow's milk is for the baby cow. We're humans, you know, it, it's kind of, kind of crazy that we drink an animal's milk, you know, it's not for human consumption. That's why they told the biggest lie when they said milk does a body good. That was the biggest lie they told us. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you look at videos, I watch videos where um, people have all kind of skin stuff and they have to burst, like pull it out through their skin, like pimples and, and cysts and boils. And most of those things are white that come out. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's, it's, yeah, if you've ever looked at any of those videos, it's an overconsumption of dairy. And it's so packed in the body that the only way it can come out is from a doctor squeezing it or pulling it out. And it's just disgusting. It'd be like just, just, it just keeps oozing out of their body, especially if they have it on the back. It'd be like this big and they have to just be squeezing it and it's all white and just, yeah, very bad. So so pim pimples on on the back oh my <laughs> yeah it's like it's it's yeah it's nasty <laughs> because a lot of people have the pimp they have it on the back they'll have it on their legs anywhere and they can't get they can't get rid of it so they go to see these dermatologists and they they pull it out for them but it's always white gushy gooey and i said that's that's milk that's oh. milk yeah mm. it, it has nowhere to go so it has to come through the skin they're not eliminating it when they go to the bathroom so it has to come out some way yeah if you ever get a chance look at some of those videos it'll really gross you out wow <laughs> but wow. since i do skincare i like watching it because it, it helps me to see what people are suffering with wow. Um, so I have another question. What can you do for chronic gastritis? Mm, gastritis, I'm not, is that like uh, when you have gas all the time, acid reflux? I, I'm I not too know. sure with the name. Is it yeah. with acid reflux? Because it says gastritis. I'm not, it's so many diseases out here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I can do some research and then I can uh, I can post it on your page or send okay. it to you and if you want to, yeah. What I would say, if it is acid reflux, they say if you take apple cider vinegar, mm -hmm. that will help you. It's because that person is having digestive problems. And so the apple cider vinegar, but you have to get the brags with the mother in it, the pure apple cider not the white distilled vinegar. That's to, just to clean your house with. You have to get like the real apple cider vinegar and you drink some and it's supposed to help with the acid reflux. Mm. That's for, yeah, if you're eating stuff that's just not agreeing with you and then you have that buildup of that gas and it's like painful, that is the worst. I, I've only had it a couple of times, but mm, yeah, it was horrible because <laughs> wow. it makes you feel like you're having a heart attack and it's just it's just gas crazy wow <laughs> it definitely really uh, makes you rethink everything that you could oh um so it's inflamed uh leave its inflammation of the lining of the stomach um a lot of gas yeah, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, th what it is, is they're eat the foods they're eating are gas forming foods, probably very spicy foods, a lot of fried foods, all those kind of foods will 
cause that. So they would have to look into like a natural remedy for to soothe the 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 intestinal lining. I'm not sure off the top of my head what it would be, but they can actually research it. You know, look up natural remedies, or like I said, if you have a problem that's really bothering you, seek out a naturopathic doctor. You know, they can really help you. They they are amazing, amazing. Yeah, I've seen them a lot, and they've they've always helped me out. So, do you recommend any naturopathic um, doctors? And I'll try to put their names in the chat. I'm gonna have to look some up because I knew some in New York, but since I've been in Virginia, no, I don't know any. <laughs> but I will do some research, and um, depending on like where their city is at, they can um, maybe they can put their city in the in the, and then we can look it up a look up a naturopathic doctor in their city, you know, depending on where they're at. And someone said on IG, raw honey is good for that condition. I believe it. Raw honey is amazing. It's amazing stuff. I use it in one of my products as well for the skin. And it's like, when I use it, my skin be glowing. So yeah, <laughs> try the raw honey and see how that works. You know? So um, just um, before we kind of close, can you just... Um, um, reintroduce yourself and um, what got you on this path. Okay, but let me just say one thing about the raw honey before I forget. You don't want to get the pasteurized honey because it's already been cooked. There's no nutrients. You need the, the pure raw honey. Man, I like Manuka honey. They sell it in Trader Joe's. It's the raw, it's best, and you're getting all the nutrients. So make sure you use that honey, not the pasteurized sugary honey. So I just wanted to say that. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what was the question? I'm sorry. Um, oh, just kind of reintroduce yourself and what got you on this path? Because there's like a lot of new watchers. Okay, so my name is Tina Jackson. I'm a self-published book author. Um, the first book was A Fight for My Life. A, a month before my 40th birthday, I experienced the worst pulling on my face. My face completely collapsed. And that was just the beginning of 38 deadly diseases. And the Western doctors couldn't help me. So God sent me to the natural doctors and they helped me. So I've just finished my second book, which is called Love Don't Hit, which is currently being edited about a domestic violence relationship also working on a poetry book for domestic violence survivors. And I'm also working on a, a beauty book because I wanna show that you can age, but still look good. You don't have to look 40, 50, 60, 70. I see some girls in their 20 now, 20s now, and they look so old and it's because of their diet. So I really wanna do this beauty book and talk about the things that I use and um, what's helped me. Um, also, when I'm working on a children's book to teach kids to stop bullying and to teach kids that if you've been sexually abused that you have to tell somebody. No child should be violated and that adult get away with it. You know, so I have like so many like books in my belly, but um, Basically, that's my, my mission and to be a speaker and to share my story of how healing can come naturally through holistic medicine. It's not always about taking a pill or a surgery and just something else that God revealed to me. The, the pills are called pharmaceutical, right? But when you look at the word pharmaceutical, what word is in the middle of pharmaceutical? The word that's in the middle of pharmaceutical is called harm. So the, the, the word is spelled P-H-A-R-M, farm, harm. So it's telling you right in the word that these pills are gonna, are gonna harm you. So it's like, oh my God, when I realized that one day, that was such a revelation to me. Like, 
it, it's like we just have to get on that he healthy path. So that is how I got into the natural medicine. God leading me to these natural doctors. And I ended up beating menstrual cramps, all kinds of health issues through natural medicine. And like I said, it was it was so amazing. And then when I got into the vegan lifestyle, it was like the foods were just so delicious. You know, you think, oh, who wants to just eat a bunch of vegetables all day? But it's not just vegetables. It's like, but you just have to like learn about it. It's it's like whole meals that were just, and you can even have sweets, but like vegan sweets. And what's great about them is they're not as sweet as your regular sweets. So that is my sicknesses is what got me on the journey of holistic medicine and being a survivor of domestic violence where I was almost killed is my journey for helping men and women and children to leave these destructive relationships and realize their worth. And once you leave, that's when you can really soar and that's when your life can really become what it should be. And basically that's my journey. If anyone wants to reach me, my email is skindivacoach at gmail.com. If you have any questions, if you wanna do a skin consultation, if you want any products, um, if you're interested in the books, you can reach me. Um, if you are having a problem with some health issue, real quickly, I met a guy on the job. He was dealing with a bleeding ulcer. And I remember every time, before I knew he had the bleeding ulcer, every time he had like an attitude, he was real nasty. So one day I just said to him, why you, why you act like that? And he said, well, I'm sick. I have a bleeding ulcer. So I said, well, you can heal that if you want. And he was like, how? So all I know is I just gave him like some plan, a diet plan. I told him stuff he has to stop eating, like spicy foods, you know, a lot of stuff like that. Literally within a few months, he told me the bleeding ulcer went, it got better. And he was, he was happy. Then he came into work every day happy. So if you have any questions about health or whatever, you can email me and I'll try my best to answer them for you. But thank you. This was awesome. <laughs> I love this because I get to help people, you know, because I was helped. So now I have to give back, you know. And um, thank you. This has been, um, oh, this has been really awesome. And I've um, so many comments and, um, you know, definitely appreciative of you sharing your your story, your journey, when you said you were going to talk about um, 38 illnesses, it's like, okay, I definitely look forward to hearing, <laughs> um, you know, um, hearing um, about this. So thank you. This has been um, super, super um, informative. Can you give your, um, your Instagram and your website? Oh, yes, because someone's asking for your email and your website and all your information. Sure. Well, I don't have a website yet, but I'm on Instagram under Tina Skin Diva and the number seven. So it's all one word. And I'm okay. on Facebook also under Tina Skin Diva. Actually, my name is Tina Jackson. That's my actual name, but I kind of gave myself Skin Diva since I do skincare. And people always ask me, how, how do I keep my skin looking great? So I just started calling myself Skin Diva. But yeah, but you can find me under Tina Skin Diva, number seven. My email is skindivacoach at gmail.com. So if you want to do like a free consultation, we can do that. If you're in a bad relationship, you need some referrals. I can give you some referrals. Um... Basically, I'm working on the website, you know, but you can find me on, on any of those social medias, Instagram or Facebook, and I'll be happy to talk with you. Yes, and we're looking forward to the book that you write on the things that you did to um, treat yourself through these um, illnesses. <laughs> yes, you know, I forgot I was going to just read a little, a tiny little bit. And I forgot, but I'll just read it real quick if that's okay. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So that's the book, The Fight for My Life. We're doing a new cover, so it's it's having it's getting a facelift. But um, 
both books will be done, be available by the summer. Um, so this is called Nausea and Swelling. So the nausea came next, followed by edema, swelling in my feet and ankles. It arrived every morning that I opened my eyes. I knew I wasn't pregnant. I knew pregnancy was not the cause because I was celibate. Here's a tip. To relieve the swelling, I began to eat watermelon, a natural diuretic. Additionally, I stopped eating fried and sugary foods. I began using herbal body wraps, which pull unwanted water out of the body. The good news is while the water is being removed from your body, you will lose a few inches within an hour. That's always good news for a woman. We tend to love anything that will make us look thinner. I also discovered that you can make herbal teas and drink them hot or cold. Just add honey and lemon. There are many different flavors of, of teas that work as a diuretic. For example, dandelion, green tea, hawthorn berries, horsetail, stinging nettle, St. John's wort, red clover, burdock, corn silk, turmeric, and chickweed. I have, I have researched these and they're effective in releasing water without the harm harmful water pill. Prepare a quart a day and consume it within that day. So yeah, that's just a little bit from the fight for my life. So we don't have to walk around bloated and, and, and filled with water and edema. There's natural remedies that can really help get rid of that water. Okay, thank you. This is awesome. And please post when the book is ready so everyone can rush out and, <laughs> and purchase it. Um, yes. <laughs> and you know what? Maybe I'll just read one more poem for those that came on late. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Okay, I get, I'll read this because I think this is something that everyone can relate to is losing a loved one that has passed away. That's got to be like one of the most painful things that we suffer in this earth. So this poem is called Besties Who Passed. In memory of those that passed, my homies, didn't we have some laughs? I wanted the good times to roll, but you had to go. You were my friend though. You were my friends through and through, not just in word, but in deed too. We visited each other all the time. We were young, time was on our side. We partied, worked, and drank hard too. We cried on each other's shoulders. I always felt safe with you. Then you left, I wept bitterly. One day you're here, then you're gone suddenly. Meanwhile, I'm reeling, can't believe you're gone kept playing sad songs. I attended your wake. I never understood why it's called a wake when it's the complete opposite. To look on your remains is a hurtful thing. You don't even look the same. Death is a hideous thing. But God said death is the last enemy to be destroyed. So don't cry, because God said we will rise if we believe and act right. It's just a matter of time before I will see you again all of my friends. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Thank you, I truly appreciate that. And um, thank you for sharing your journey with us this evening. We truly, truly um, appreciate this. It's, it's an awesome journey. And we definitely look forward to hearing more from you. And, and you made the information so accessible, <laughs> you know, and so easily mm -hmm. understandable. So uh, I really appreciate that because, you know, it's easy to relate to. So thank you everyone for tuning into this week's Transformation Thursday. This was week 123 with Miss Tina Skin Diva, uh, yes. formerly of the Bronx, now in Virginia. Yes, <laughs> so yes. um, a, as a reminder, Transformation Thursday happens here every Thursday. 7, 7, 10, 7, 15. Just, um, just uh, follow my IG or Facebook. I, oh. We will be starting it at some point. And as a reminder, this Saturday, the 25th in the Bronx is her story, Reclaiming Our Power and Healing at 1716 Southern Boulevard from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. A 
dynamic lineup of speakers, vendors, and beautiful, beautiful vibes. I'm sure you've gotten your tickets already. If not, please um, check out Eventbrite and find the registration information. You can register through PayPal or Zelle. You don't want to miss it. Um, Miss Tina, thank you so much for sharing. Um, this will be uploaded to my YouTube, as I do have the YouTube, Bronx Holistic Healing, and it will be on my Instagram for people who want to see the entire session. Thank so you so much. And I just want to say I'm planning the summer for a book signing in New York, so I'll, I'll let you know when, and I will be tuning into your show as well. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful evening. And remember, we are all a spark of the divine. Okay. Yes. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Bye. That was great. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it let me stop the recording okay <laughs> i did that was amazing <laughs>